This, we believe in victory. We believe in all this stuff. You know what's going on? Uh, it says in there when Jesus told the parable of the seed and the sowers, it said, you know, certain seed fell on certain ground, certain feet fell on certain ground, and some of it, you know, grew up fast and scorched and all that stuff. Remember, it said, it said, then when persecution came because of the word, it says, Persecution came because of the word. So you get all fired up in here. Jeff sings in songs, and more. you you come out of here, and you gonna choke the devil right, right? That's all good. I like it. That's what we come here for. But here's what's going to happen. I'm just gonna warn you. He's going to come at you and try to back you up off that thing because he stands to lose. And He's going to put pressure in places and try to prove that you don't really believe what it is that you say you believe. Now the fight really begins. You see why He wants to keep us distracted with all this sin nonsense? Uh, the um, devil, if he can't get to you, he's going to try to get to your family. Yeah, he's a loser. <laughs> he's a loser. He's a loser. But he couldn't get to the Cherry family, that's a big family. And so his grand the, the grandchildren have been born with a number of handicaps. Yeah. Because the devil can't tear the cherry family down. Yeah. He stands for Well I say the well, well, church ought to grow up and find out who she is and start correcting the handicap. I mean, if Jesus Himself... Here, here's my gauge, right? If Jesus Himself in the flesh walked in the room tonight, would anybody leave handicapped? No. Why is that not our standard? If Jesus walked in the room tonight, would anybody leave sick? No. no. Come on, I show you verse after verse after verse where it says He healed them all. Various kinds, every kind, didn't matter. Did not matter. And the devil came at him, just like I'm telling you, trying to get him to prove that he don't really believe who he says he is and all this stuff. Passed with flying colors. And everywhere he went, the devil had to bow his knee and get out of his way. So if Jesus was in the room tonight, would anybody leave handicapped? Would anybody leave sick? Would anybody leave with a tumor? Would anybody leave with diabetes? Would anybody leave with arthritis? Would anybody leave with all this stuff that was born out of the curse? No. Why is that not our standard? Because it's not true. What's not true? We're not sick. The devil's telling us we're sick. Well, that's true. I agree with you there. I'm just saying, we put up with all this stuff and we we sell out cheap and we don't go for the things of God and decide to believe and say, you know what, He wants this. He's going to raise us up. Amen. Come on, I, you're, you're here tonight and the ceiling's falling down and there's manure on the walls and the preacher wears a hat. <laughs> I already have proof enough that you're hungry for more than what the establishments have provided. So I'm saying if that's the standard, it's it's plainly laid out for us. Let's just because we're not there yet doesn't mean we just throw up our hands and say it's no use, we'll never make it, it's too big of a thing. Huh. God's looking for dreamers. Oh, he's looking for hungry folks. He'll step over a hundred churches looking for some hungry folks. I'm just saying, why not us? Hey, I'm saying if y'all don't want to go, I'm still going. That's right. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to the place where people walk in here with hurt shoulders and before anybody even lays hands on them, they, they're healed before they even get prayed for. Right? You think that's too big? Jesus so me, Drew. Believe big, son. Believe big. I want him to I want to snap his head every once in a while and think, man, he's man, I ain't seen this. He, he said two times I saw, I ain't seen faith like this and all it. You know when he said that? He said that to two Gentiles. Jesus said, Whoa, I ain't seen faith like this. And I hang out in the church. Two times, and they were both Gentiles. You know what that tells me? 
Their faith was not weighed down by the do's and the don'ts and the rules of religion and the standards and all this nonsense that we've made it about. All they knew was, here's a man that can cause the blind to see and raise the yeah. dead. Just say we want it. Be hungry for it. Say you're going to have to get us there and you're going to have to do whatever it takes to get us there because we say go ahead and do whatever it takes to get us there. We want to be there. I'm tired of having church. I mean, I love church. I love getting together. But you know how much fun this would be if, if people walked in here with all kinds of everything and walked out free? Yep. <laughs> I'm going to put one way on that wheelchair ramp out there. Yeah. <laughs> one. <laughs> I'm just telling you, this is where, this is where Grace is going to carry you. Uh, they'll tell you, oh, that Grace, you got to watch him, Grace, they just say, you know, that, they're scared. Because there's never ending to what grace can do. Grace continues to grow you. Grace will, will transform you into what it is that you were intended to be from the get-go. You're not going to add anything to it. I'm telling you, grace is the answer. It's the only answer. It's the only way. Grace continues to transform you into what you were intended to be before the curse ever entered the world, before you ever sinned. Amen. Grace is God treating us as if sin never existed. Thank you, Jesus. Now, it's out of His mind. Why don't we get it out of our mind? Yes! It's going to trans continue to transform us. We're going to get to the place. We're going to get to the place where faith is so high in this room because of the grace that we believe in that they can't leave sick. Not only can they get here and not leave sick, but you're going to be carrying stuff on you. You walk by somebody in Walmart. Hey, you laying hands on the sick. Jesus said, I'm sorry. Jesus said in Mark 16, those that believe in my name lay hands on the sick and they recover. It's, uh, oh gosh, this is going to hurt. I'm talking to me, all right? Jesus said, those that believe in my name lay hands on the sick and they recover. So if I'm not laying hands on the sick and they're not recovering, what's the problem? You. you. He's not the problem. No, I promise you, you if there's a short circuit in the issue somewhere, it's always going to be on my side. Yep. He said, those that believe, these signs follow. Those that believe, they lay hands on the sick and they recover. They cast out devils. So if that's not happening, oh, I can say I believe. Oh, I can sing the songs. I can do, you know, but talk is cheap. Ouch. I'm just saying, let's let Him carry us to the place where now faith is. Not later. I've seen David run to a fight. <laughs> he ran to a fight. And he didn't say, well, if our faith gets high enough, come on, Israel army, maybe if we can have a prayer meeting or any of this stuff. Uh-uh. He said, this day. He didn't say next Tuesday or 21 days from now. He said, this day right here. You have taunted God and the people of God for the last time. I'm going to remove your head from you and feed the whole army of the Philistines to the fowl of the air. Come on, that's faith. That's, that's confidence in the covenant. That's right. That's confidence in the covenant. All that's birthed out of David having confidence and he's in covenant with God and, and Goliath is not. Now if David can have that kind of confidence in a covenant based on the blood of bulls and goats. <laughs> How much 
more so for those of us that have a covenant based on the blood of God Himself. Yes. Yes. Come on. I'm, I feel like a cheerleader. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Let's go get this thing. Come on, this grace has put us to a place where we, we're, we're in the middle of repentance. Now, I don't preach on repentance, but as far as what they, they criticize me about, they'll say, all right, everyone on down there, he just preaches that grace and unconditional love. He don't preach on sin. And he don't preach on repentance. I don't preach on repentance, and I don't preach it using guilt and control to try to manipulate into you into behaving a certain way. I preach what causes repentance. Amen. Because you're already tonight, it's all over the whole room, everybody in here, I believe, is already thinking differently than you did when you came in. Ah. Yes. And I ain't always preaching about repentance, but by golly, when are we going to start preaching something that causes it? We're going to have so much confidence in this grace that faith comes alive inside of us and we become who it is that He says we are and start operating like He says we can operate and quit having church and becoming the church. Walking through the earth like sons of God so much so that we walk. Here's what grace does. It put me back in with God. Amen. Amen. I'm friends with God and, and everything that kept me separated from God was put on someone else and I'm no longer separated. No matter what, no matter, I'm never separated. So I get to hang out with God. And the more I hang out with God, the more I smell like God. And the more I hang out with God, the more I hear God, the more I talk to God, the more I sound like God. Hey, I, you know what? I work with a guy over there from Brazil and he's got an accent, you know, and if I'm with him all day for long, I'm, I'm talking with an accent. Like, <laughs> you're talking like that. Think, what in the world? I'm saying, you, you, you're with somebody enough and you're listening to them enough, you start talking like them. That's what Grace has done. Hey, you, you start with, I'm with my dad enough, I, you can tell I walk like my dad. I talk like my dad. Don't tell me this is what Grace has done. I smell like my dad. My character's become like my dad. I have fruits of the Spirit like my dad. Oh, yeah. Now my heart's become like my dad. And everywhere my dad went, he healed the sick and whooped the devil and set captives free and nobody left depressed. And I'm not settling until we get to that place. Just because we're not there yet, so what? We're on our way. we got to start someplace, don't we? We might as well just settle the fact and say, I'm, I'm done going through the motions. I'm done playing church. I'm going to that place, and whatever it takes to get me there, I'm going to be hungry for it. <sighs> Have I got the right bunch? All right. <laughs> so this is all I know left what to do is say, this is what we want. And if we think we can produce it and do it, we'll just get religious again and mess it up again. So here's what we got to do. we got to say, will you go sing that song, Jeff, uh, that one that I like that always messes me up? <laughs> I'm messed up anyway. Might as well just go right on over the edge. <laughs> here's, this is all we can add to it. This is all we can do. We can say, in our hearts, we, we can say, I see that this is the truth. And I'm hungry for it. And I'm going to rely on Him to do it in me. And to take me to the place. Even when I squirm later. Even, even when the pressure comes. Because you're going to leave out of here faith is high. I mean, the, the devil ain't going to be laying over the, out there on the sidewalk waiting on you to put him in a chokehold. Because he knows you got that right now. Right? You're walking out here stomping, right? Everybody, I mean, that. I'm, we can stop you. That's right. Bible says so. That's right. That's right. I'm saying the pressure's going to come, and he's going to try to back you off of it, and that's when, that's when, that's when the fight starts. That's when you say, mm -mm -mm -mm. uh uh, I know who I am. Hey, I, I've wore, there's a, there's a, a washout in my driveway girl on one side where I've made so many trips up down that driveway. Devil tries something, tries getting on me. I march up down that driveway. Me and Dad, I say, hey, I know who I am. And I know what I got. And I know how I got it. 
And it didn't have nothing to do with me and performing a certain way or any of this. I got it for free. I got it because He loves me. And I know what I got. And I know how I got it. And I'm a son of God. And the righteousness of God is alive inside of me. And the, if sin was placed on somebody else, there's no sin on my record. And if there's no sin on my record, then the effects of sin have to be gone from my body. You, you, you feeling this? Now faith is. You see what it creates inside of you? He tried to put something on me. He better not because all it does is drive me closer and drive me deeper. And I say, you run the risk, big boy, coming at me now. Because if he comes at me now, we go to we, we toe to toe. And we go toe to toe. I just get better at winning. He drives me further. And you, you're running the risk. You better weigh the cost. You see what's on me now? It's what I'm talking about. talking about. If we get some of this going, I'm telling you, this. I'm talking about lives being changed. I'm talking about some stuff going on. I'm telling you, God wanted to do this in Southern Illinois. I'm telling you, God's fed up with having church. He's looking for some folks that'll sell out and say, I want to go and I'll do it. Use me. I'll tell you one thing I'm, I'm quitting. I remember it's probably been probably 13 or 14 years ago. I was in a denominational church and I didn't know nothing. I just went to church. I prayed the prayer. And I tried to be as faithful as a church attendee as I could be. I thought that's what it was all about. I tried my hardest. And there was this little old guy there and he had something, I don't know, MS or I don't even know what it was, but he was in a wheelchair couldn't walk, you know. And this was the sweetest man that ever lived. I'm talking about, he'd wheel that wheelchair up to the front. He couldn't get up on the, you know, they had a platform deal. He couldn't get up on that. He'd wheel up to the front, and they'd hand a microphone down to him, and he'd sing. Man, I'm telling you, he'd sing, and, and tears just run down his face, and he'd wipe the whole place out. I'm talking about powerful. I, I think he's not, I think he's I'm going to heaven now. I don't think he's still around now. But here this man, I mean the sweetest man that there was. Had a heart for God. I mean he would just, he would just touch you. I mean he's one of those. And I remember, I can remember it like it was yesterday. Him up there crying his heart out singing and blessing everybody. Never blaming God, nothing. Here he is at the stage end in that wheelchair and all this. And I said, God, if anybody could be healed, why couldn't he be healed? And before I was even smart enough to know that God might talk to you, somehow I knew in my heart that he said to me, he could be if I had somebody with guts enough to make it happen. Yeah, don't clap because it stabbed me right in the heart because I thought, whoa. Oh, Man, I because it ain't me. Broke my heart. Stabbed me, cut me. I mean, it's like let the air out of me. Because I knew it wasn't me. And I knew I didn't have it. And right there I said this. You know it ain't me right now. But if you'll show me, I'll go. life changing right there at that point in time. And I've been on a journey. And it's fun. <laughs> and so I, I y'all y'all want on a journey too, ain't you? Does anybody want to go? Does anybody want to say, I'll be the one if you'll teach me. It's all he's looking for. Humble enough to say, I'll be the one if you'll teach me. I will stand up with this grace and look the devil in the eye and tell him to get his no good, rotten, lying, defeated, loser self right on out of this situation, whatever it is. Alright? Everybody good? Alright, Daddy. My goodness. You guys.
love you, God. Let, listen to him sing this song. Let it soak in on you. If you need healing in your body tonight, you can get it. If there's pain in your body tonight, don't leave here with it. If you need help with it, you get help with it. If you don't need help with it, just sit there while they're singing and you just receive it, alright? Let God do what He wants to do. Is everybody good? Yeah. Alright, love y'all. Love you, Jason. the verse he asked me to read too. The day is coming, says the Lord of Jeremiah 31, 31, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. This covenant will not be like the one I made with their ancestors. This covenant will not be like the one I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and brought them out of the land of Egypt. Because they broke that one. I love you all. For your mercy never fails all my life. No more milkshakes. I've been held in your <laughs> hand. Okay. From the moment that I wake up. It's fair. Till I lay my head. I know. Don't eat I'm going to sing. Your sugar will be good. Are good? Yes.
Thank you.